Back from Once Upon a Time. This is episode 15 of season four. Uh, yeah, excited as always to carry on with this season. Uh, last episode was really interesting with getting some backstory on uh, Virginia and Maleficent's relationship and seeing how that all kind of properly formed and came about. Um, and I think the biggest thing um, was Regina going undercover, kidnapping Pinocchio for gold and etc. etc. And then he got turned back into August for questioning. So he's back in the mix, which I was never going to um, expect. But here we are. That's on upon a time. So I'm very, very intrigued to see what his role is going to be. Is he going to be around permanently? Is this like a temporary thing? I really don't know how things are going to go because, you know, Regina still needs to kind of maintain her cover at the minute. So what's she going to do? What's she going to let happen? No idea, but that's very, very exciting. So, yeah, intrigued to see what they're going to do next. So let's get into the next one. We keep Pan happy. Of course. Show Peter Pan, cowards. Do you hear that? Oh, siren. Rock! Whoopsie. It's not meant even Ghostbusters. Just because one human hurt mother doesn't mean they're all bad. Enough! As long as you live in my Oh, ocean, this is timely. You will live by my rules. And maybe I don't want to live in your ocean. Ursula, how all you want, but I expect you home oh. by high time. Be content that you've finally chosen the winning side. Uh-huh. Oh. Ah, oh, they can see the smoke, maybe. Hey, Margaret. Tell us that, are you okay? I have to make this quick. We don't have much time. Oh. <laughs> oh. Pinocchio's fine. So the dark ones returned. Yeah. Shocking. I'm gonna return a happy ending. Can you really do that? I. Because I'm the one who took it from her in the first place. Oh. Is it going to be like he stole her voice or something? What's that? The twist on the tail. Kindling. If I return your happy ending, you're going to tell me exactly what he's doing in Storybook. You got yourself a deal. Well, deals always go well on this show. Your voice can soothe even the most haunted soul. You really think so? It's a very nice voice. Boop. Looks like you're not the only thing that's changed. Oh. She's now enchanted to take away her reason. To leave her voice. Shit. Rather her voice. Just show her how awful humans really can be. You're a terrible father. It's small, isn't it? Careful, man. <laughs> it's not wise to insult the size of a pirate ship. And you spend more time in one London than anyone I know. You must have something that can restore it. Yeah. Here it look. Is this real? This better be real. Damn it. It's not gonna be real though, is it? Get away from here. What? They made them real. This cannot do that. Oh no no no. Yeah. Not hurt a kid, but August? Who knows what'll do to him? No. Don't listen to the potential for darkness shit. 
It's activated that built-in lie detector. I don't know what you're talking about. No. Oh. Oh dear. He told you everything. Oh. Looks like the child catcher now. Trap the author behind a door. Stab him with your nose. It's somewhere in Storybrooke. Helpful. That wasn't so hard, no? Was it? I mean, wood. I'm gonna have the masking where Ursula is, because she just fucked off. I was expecting it to be in the giant glass bottle still. <laughs> that would have been funny. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. Oh. Still the same selfish pirate as always. I never go up against a woman with eight hands, especially when you only have one. Have a nice swim. Savage. Oh boy. Oh! Don't worry. You can thank me later. Bloody good timing, Ariel. The Queen trapped your ship as punishment. How did that? And I accidentally got swept up in the magic. Ah. Thanks for letting me out. That's kind of cool. Ariel, Ursula? Villains can't get the happy endings. Maybe that's because villains always go about getting them the wrong way. You were a villain once. You're not doing so bad. The Sea King has been seeking his daughter. Ha! Huh. I don't have to kill you to make you suffer. I know I'm not the only one consumed by vengeance. Oh. You said you had a code. You said you'd never steal my voice. That was before your father destroyed You didn't my read the fine print. Ursula! You know what? That's, that's what you get, Aquaman. Uh, nice. Nice one, Mom. Oh, I see somebody's been practicing. Mm -hmm. I seem to remember someone telling me I just needed to believe in myself. I always knew you'd figure it out. It's good to have you back, even if it isn't the way things were supposed to be. But I didn't have to wait 20 years to see you as you again. Oh. Me too. Awesome. Your boyfriend is shark bait. Excuse me. Oh. Precious little mermaid. Well, I'm not going to be that. Aha! The sea goddess of old. Legend says she was strong and powerful. Well, that's exactly what I want to be. Ah, that's how she gets the tentacles. <laughs> how are you still <laughs> good at surviving? Or you're bad at killing? Father. Oh. Ursula. Well, how about that? I never should have forced you to use your voice as a weapon. Oh, really? Just... What if he's like terrible now because she hasn't been using it? Is that... Ah! Now that you are whole again. You I'll can make, make me whole again. Well, that's nice. Is this just not going to be evil now? Is she, is she not like, done? You have no idea how easy it is to fall back into the darkness. Whatever mistakes you made with Ursula, you fixed. Well, she has the potential for darkness, so you no, never know. We've never discussed one fact. You're a villain. I was a villain. Yeah, you didn't get your happy ending. Anymore. Neither is Regina, but she still lost her happy ending. If you're afraid of losing your happy ending, that means you found it. What is it? Don't you know, Emma? <laughs> oh, I wonder. It's you. That's a very smooth way of saying I love you. Hey!
<laughs> you don't believe what I know. Who would be foolish enough to cross us? I know exactly who. Ursula. She sold us out for a reunion with uh, Daddy the Last. Yeah. And as long as there's a savior, the author can't give the villains what they really want. And the Dark One knows this. But haven't you got your happy ending now? It sounds like you're afraid of the villain you used to be and the one you might become again. No, I don't think that's it. In my dream, that was what Hook was afraid of. Can, can you get me a phone number, a way to contact him, anything? Yes. Do it. Yeah, All the things. When Gold asked me, I didn't know where the door was because I didn't know where Henry was keeping this page. That is the door? The author is trapped inside the book. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> oh! Okay, a uh, really great episode. I really enjoyed that one. Uh, I liked finally getting some answers about the Hook and Ursa connection and the past between them. Um, and kind of rounding off that story in actually a really nice way. Um, and I also enjoyed, Once Upon a Time does it a lot, when they kind of merge like stories together and characters together and the fact that Ursa's kind of backstory was a lot like the Disney version of Little Mermaid with Ariel. I quite liked that. But the fact that Ariel still turned up in this episode was quite nice because it was kind of a Ursula-centric story. Um, I, I guess she's done. I guess she's gone. That is that is a surprise. I won't lie. Um, but yeah. I do think they wrapped the story up in a very interesting way, but the fact there's still like, what, seven episodes or something left of the season still? Um, seems kind of crazy that they have like, lost a team member and they're talking about, you know, all villains can't get the happy endings and stuff, but Ursula did. And yet they're still saying that can't be the case. So I, I, I'm not sure I understood what was going on there. Um, and... I wish I should probably ignore it because this is just kind of imprinted in me based on my uni course. But the fact that all the villains they had and brought in for the second half of the season, the fact that they've written off the only black villain so early doesn't quite sit well with me. Um, but I don't know. I think that's just my university course kind of getting to me because you kind of talk to see that things and sometimes they don't. You know, it's not meant that way. Maybe it's just a natural stopping point for her story. But um, regardless of that, I do think they did a really nice story with Ursula in this one. Um, yeah, you know, the backstory with her and her voice and that connection with Hook, uh, her mother dying, of course. Got to be a, a dead parent somewhere. Um, and then, yeah, we had the king as well. Um, I really liked the guy who played the king. I thought he did a great job. Um, his voice was like, Rawr! I love that voice. Uh, so how that all tied in together was really nice and it was cool to kind of see Nursta with um, in the land um, with magic I guess with the, like the enchanted forest um, it's nice to see that Ursula with a decent costume <laughs> no offence to um, later Ursula in their costume um, but I really did enjoy how they kind of tied that all together um, the idea of like vengeance kind of being the driving force for Ursula's father and Hook and that kind of what brought them together and that's ended up more causing that pain, the kind of parallels between revenge kind of consuming you. Uh, I thought that was a really interesting idea and kind of losing your way or losing someone because of that because the king's vengeance kind of costs what was left of Ursula's mother to kind of disappear until obviously they fixed it near the end. Um, and... Uh, Hook's kind of quest for vengeance and to get answers about what Gold's up to. Uh, he's starting to lose himself again, he felt like. And I think that kind of echoes back to um, earlier in the season with like Hook getting his hand restored and he was like scared that was kind of bringing out this other side of him that he used to be, like the villain that he used to be. Um, and he was kind of scared that was resurfacing and he didn't want to lose his happy ending with Emma. Um, that was a really nice scene as well when he kind of told Emma that she was like his happy ending and stuff like that. Um, and he's scared of that darkness kind of coming back to him and 
Alongside that, we have this whole really interesting idea of Emma and her potential for darkness. And we had a moment early in the episode where Mary Margaret and David kind of caught Emma saying something a bit dark. Um, so clearly that's going to be more and more of a thing and maybe that's going to tie into Hook's darkness and maybe why he could lose a happy ending. But I hope those two are okay because I like those two. Um, so there's some really, really interesting things going on with that. I really did enjoy kind of what they were going for there. Um, so yeah, that was all very well done. I feel like all the stories they had tied in pretty nicely. Um, I think the only things that really kind of felt a bit like forced in was um, Will Scarlet. Um, it's a cool idea, because obviously he went to Neverland and everything in the spin-off, um, which I still haven't finished, I need to finish that. Um, and therefore he could like lead them to make the Jolly Roger like huge again, which is a really cool way of like fixing that problem. Um, I mean, they didn't need to do it because they could have just, she could have just brought the Jolly Roger back and it was fine. Um, but maybe they wanted an excuse to get Ariel in, which is another thing I kind of felt like was a bit shoehorned into the episode. No, I don't really mind because I, I think the explanation for how it like happened and how she was there to like rescue Hook and everything, I actually thought that was very, very clever. So I kind of can kind of excuse how a bit Probard in it felt with her appearing. Um, but yeah, I kind of got that feeling with the Will Scarlet stuff as well. Because um, you didn't necessarily need to have that problem with Julia Roger being tiny. But still, it was, you know, he's main cast, you have to use him. Uh, but ongoing with the Bell and Will kind of thing, I feel like we really need to explain a bit more of how that came about. Because it just, I thought they were going to really develop on how it happened and how they kind of got together in that spark, but they just haven't. Uh, so I'm hoping we do get something eventually. Maybe like a Will Scarlet centric episode, maybe. Um, but yeah, it's really, really clever kind of things tying in to this episode. And the August thing was amongst that. It was great to see the actor back. Um, I don't know how much more we're going to get of him. He seems to still be around for now. And I like the revelation that um, the drawing of the door is actually the door and the author is trapped in the storybook. That's why he ha hasn't been found yet. I thought that was a really neat twist and looking forward to seeing where they go with that because I've always been excited about the author kind of plot line and where they could go ever since they kind of first introduced it. So I'm very, very pleased and excited to see that hopefully take center stage at some point. But we're, de we're definitely getting closer to advancing that plot line. So that's all really cool. Loved everything with that. Um, and yeah, the um, nose growing torture scene. I don't know if it was like really good or really bad. I feel like it was a bit ridiculous for me, personally. I couldn't quite take it seriously. I know it's like a big part of Pinocchio's character that his nose grows when he lies, and it, I can see where, what they were going for with that being a good interrogation method, because if it's in a character you could interrogate well, it would be Pinocchio in that sense. Um, but I don't know, I feel like the nose growing, especially because it wasn't like, he wasn't even like really looking like wood. Maybe if he had the wooden effect still and his nose was growing, I think maybe I could have bought it a bit more. The fact that he just looked normal and then his nose was growing, I was like, oh. it just, I don't know, it was a bit silly to me. Maybe they could have just had it be, you know, you drink the potion, you're slowly turning back into wood completely. And then, you know, I have the antidote here once you tell us what you know. Um, but I guess they just wanted to include the nose thing, which I don't blame them for, but I don't know, that I think it was a bit silly for me. Um, but still, it is what it is, and I still continue to enjoy Gold and uh, Maleficent and uh, Cruella kind of being like the villains and stuff, even though they didn't have like the biggest of roles because this is very Ursula-centric. And I guess it's to, to wrap up her arc, which is, I don't know, for that it's kind of a shame that she seems to be gone, even though I, I am very satisfied with that ending for her. Um, but I am a bit confused as to the whole happy ending thing, how has she achieved hers? But at the same time saying, oh, villains can't get the happy endings. And that's what Hook's worried about. Yeah, she seems to have gotten hers. So maybe something's just going to go wrong with that. I don't know. But still, um, I really liked that with her story. And yeah, the bringing Ariel back into it, it was cool to see her again. Um, and I did like the explanation, even though it was kind of, it seemed a bit crowbarred in that she was in this episode. But um, yeah, I like the explanation of it and how she saved Hook and everything. But again, it's, you didn't necessarily have to do that, you know. She could have just knocked Hook out and left, you know. Uh... So yeah, that was all cool. And then, um, oh yeah, I've seen Robin. Ah, 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 I think he's gonna come back into it. They can't just tease us with that. 
and the fact that Regina went to um, Emma at the end and said, you know, can you track him down and get something, a way to contact him. So I feel like we're going to see more of him, which I'm over the moon about because I love Robin and Regina so, so much. Um, so it, it was nice to kind of see him again, even if it was like this kind of dream sequence. But the fact that the evil queen showed up there and was like apparently protecting him, very intrigued as to what that means and where they're going to go with that and exactly what that entails. Um, but it spoke a lot about, you know, fearing the darkness inside of you and fearing the person you used to be with Regina. They did it um, in a sense, they did it with August. Um, the king, I guess, Ursa's father he seemed to not be who he used to be. And then he realized the error of his ways. Um, and yeah, Hook, obviously, as well. And things like that is a very interesting kind of tie in. And Emma, her potential for darkness. Uh, that's definitely going to be a big deal. So that's all cool. Loved Regina kind of struggling being undercover and um, her taking over Mary Margaret was kind of cool actually. I liked that. Um, and just toying with how far can I let this go. I really liked seeing her be the undercover kind of operative and the fact that um, they are like, oh, there's a mole in our group. And then obviously Ursula the kind of pissed off uh, so they could kind of blame it on her. It's a cool way of Regina keeping her cover. So that will make a lot of sense. I thought that was kind of nicely done. Um, even though I do feel like it's a bit of a shame that Ursa's story is wrapped up so soon. Um, I feel like they could have held on telling this story a little longer, but maybe they just have more to the story that I don't really know entirely about yet. Maybe this just had to happen here and they couldn't like wait a few episodes to do the Ursa backstory. I don't know. Um, but regardless, yeah, really, really great episode. Um, I thought the backstory was fantastic with Ursula and Hook. Really enjoyed that. The theme of like vengeance, the darkness overtaking you, being afraid of being who you used to be. Uh, all those themes I thought was very strong. It all tied in, flowed really, really well, all these different stories going on. Um, I think the Will and Ariel stuff did kind of seem a bit quite bad in, but I can kind of excuse it because I think it, doesn't make, it did make sense in what they were going for with the episode. Um, it was great seeing August back and the answers about the author that in that plot was great. Um, even if I wasn't a big fan of the nose growing torture scene. Um, and yeah, the idea of like Regina's dream about Robin and tracking him down. Another very interesting um, storyline that I'm very invested in because I love Robin and Regina. So really, really great stuff with all of that. I, I just feel like there's some lovely character moments with Ursula and her dad, um, with Emma and Hook, their little scene. Um, great stuff, basically. And I really did enjoy um, how events played out. It was a very satisfying end to Ursula's character for me, if that is really the end. I kind of hope it's not, I feel like she's been like in like, what, six episodes and then now already getting rid of her. It seems a bit like, oh, but who knows? Maybe they've got even bigger plans for the rest of this arc and there just wasn't room for three Queens of Darkness. Um, or maybe just one by one, they're gonna like write out these characters, I don't know. Maybe um, Cruella finds her happy ending in like the next episode and she she's gone then they have to deal with the whole Maleficent, Mary Margaret, David, baby thing. Because um, that's still obviously kind of went on the back burner in this episode, but that's kind of fine because it was a big focus in previous ones. Um, so they still need to address that. And obviously gold, I think, is always going to be sticking around as the villain. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, regardless of how it kind of irks me a bit, the placement of it and uh, her exit so early in this arc, I feel like we're only just getting started with the arc. Um, what they did, I thought, was a really, really cool story. I liked blending in with like a lot of the Little Mermaid kind of Disney tale. Um, ha, tale, mermaid. Um, and yeah, I thought really, really good stuff overall. And the idea of like um, the king trying to get revenge on um, people for his like wife's death by having her so they use her voice for evil. Uh, really, really interesting ideas. There's a lot of that kind of thrown in there, but it all gelled for the most part very very well I think it flowed very nicely uh, so yeah really really solid episode overall and I can't wait to see where they're going to take things with the rest of this arc but until my next reaction thanks for watching